Hey, what's going on? Welcome back to Iron Anchor Cycles. I'm Shep, and today we're gonna do something a little different. So if you were looking for one of our regular videos where we are taking a bike apart, completing a project, and maybe running a bike on a dyno, this is not gonna be one of those videos. What we're gonna do today is probably, I guess, tell a story is the best way to describe it. Uh, over the last, uh, I don't know, months or whatever, uh, we've been getting questions on and off, people seeing this bike in the background of videos and posts, and we got one just recently. So I decided to do a video uh, to kind of tell the story of the Black Dyna, because uh, people have asked about it, and we've never really talked about it. So that's what we're gonna do today. Uh, it's, I think, a pretty interesting story, and we're gonna kind of go through the history of uh, kind of where this bike came from, and how it got here, and, and why it's here, and kind of why you've never seen it in a video. Uh, so if you want to come along with us, we'll tell the story from beginning to end. We've got some kind of photos I'll show you along the journey, and uh, I guess we'll just tell you the story. So before we get into the history and kind of where uh, the bike started, we can talk a little bit about kind of the bike as it sits now and, you know, uh, what, what we're looking at. So uh, this is, while not uh, always patently obvious to uh, the average onlooker, this is a 2005 Super Glide. Now, people ask, uh, is it a DX? People ask, is it a Street Bob? People ask, I don't know. Um, there's a lot of things that have been changed on the bike, so unless you're looking at the right detail, you might not necessarily get the model correct. Uh, but for those of you who are interested, the, get, the giveaway, uh, if you will, is the blonde motor. Uh, so for these 05 models, this would be a Super Glide, would be the bike that came with that uh, blonde motor. So this bike started its life as a Twin Cam 88. Um, and just about everything on this bike has been changed. So it is not necessarily the fanciest bike in the world, uh, but this is one of my absolute favorite bikes, and this is my personal bike, and in fact, this is the first Harley I ever owned. So that's why the story to me is an interesting one, is that this is really sort of what started everything for me in terms of the world of Harley-Davidson and brought me to working at Harley-Davidson in Milwaukee and brought me to opening Iron Anchor Cycles and being here with all of you today. So. Uh, it's a special one, and for that reason, uh, I kind of joked, it's the last bike I'd ever sell. There's really no reason to ever let go of this bike, and you know, if you're lucky enough to get your hands on your first bike, and I did let it go for a while and bought it back, uh, you're unlikely to, to get it again, in my opinion. It sort of goes out into the ether, and then it's gone forever, and you can, you can, never, you can never find it, and you wind up you know, searching for it. So uh, anyway, enough of a little tangent there. Uh, back to sort of what we're looking at here. So started its life, 05 Super Glide, uh, Twin Cam 88. Um, what you're looking at now is obviously a lot of different things. The motor has some work done to it. Uh, we'll get into what we did on the motor, but it is no longer an 88. Uh, the bike started its life as blue and is now black. Uh, the rear fender is the original fender. We just painted it black. The tank uh, needed to be replaced because it was damaged, and so we got this black street bob tank, one of the things that throws people off about the model. Um, and then the front end, obviously, hopefully it's in the camera angle here. It's been converted to dual disc. It's got the... Uh, the CVO uh, touring Brembo calipers on it. Another thing that sort of throws people off, dual disc, single disc, whatever. Um, and really what we were trying to do with it was kind of just build the, we called it kind of uh, everyman Dyna, just all the kind of parts that you'd want to have on it to make it a, a rider, but really do nothing special with it. And that was the first iteration of building it once, once I got the bike back. Um, but then things sort of took a turn and we wound up doing the motor and upgrading the suspension and brakes and doing a whole bunch of other stuff. And now it's just become such a blast. And I can't really explain why the bike is so good. Uh, the, the best I can come up with is that when you're building a bike, there is some part science and some part art or call it magic that comes to making things just work the way they're supposed to work. And you can plan for and, uh, you know, work with the science portion of it, upgraded parts, knowing what things are gonna do. But sometimes it's just a little bit of dark magic in there where things just sort of come together really well. And that's the case with this. There are some super premium high-end components on this, like the motor, the Owens rear shocks, but uh, the front end is pretty stock. Um, it's got two over tubes and it's got preload adjusters on it. Um, but otherwise, it's a pretty much stock front end. It's got stock springs, uh, it's got tracker die extended dampers, but um, you know, still just the regular spring and oil setup. And this bike has no stabilizers of any kind on it. No spooth kit, no GPR, no uh, fork brace, nothing like that. But for some reason, uh, it just rides super tight, super straight, hardly any kind of dyno wobble at all. 
um, it really just works the way it's supposed to. Uh, motor mounts are stock, um, so it just, it's great. And so for that reason, um, we're trying not to really change anything with it and just kind of leave it how it is and just enjoy riding it. Um, and I probably ride this one more than, you know, my newer bikes because um, I just love it so much. So um, it is an interesting mix of, of parts. I mean, like you've got some inexpensive stuff on here. Like we've got these sort of OE brake lines uh, that are left behind the handlebar that's on here. It's not the typical Krauss setup we do. It's just a Biltwell T-bar that's, you know, I don't know what the price on them now is, but I think when we did it, it was probably 150 bucks or something like that. So we weren't trying to break the bank. We're just trying to build a cool black Dyna. Um, obviously a little different with the, the blonde motor, but um, while something, when I bought the bike, I didn't know enough about Harleys to realize I was buying a bike with a blonde motor and I wasn't gonna like it. But after all these years, really what's happened is this has become one of the defining characteristics of this bike and people recognize it because it's the black dyno with the chrome covers and the, the blonde motor, in my opinion, and you know, I'll take a step back here. I mean, I actually think it looks really awesome as it is. And it's not something we really planned for. Um, it was just a coincidence that it wound up working out and just looking so clean and just a little different than all the other black dynas you see. So it, it was sort of a, a happy accident. And, and I guess a lot of the story of this bike is happy accidents. So maybe we'll get into a little bit more about the bike um, in a minute, but I think what I wanna do now is kind of get into the full story because that's what I told you we were gonna do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw some pictures up on the screen. I went through and kind of found a bunch of stuff over the course of the bike and I'll walk you kind of through the very beginning to uh, I guess where we are now. And I'll just scroll through the pictures and let you guys see them. Um, and then you'll be able to kind of follow along uh, with, with the story. So here we go. Okay. So I'm gonna scroll through the photos on my phone and talk about them and tell you the story and we'll put the pictures up on the screen so you can see them. So the story begins right here with a Craigslist ad for a 2005 Super Glide. And that's the photo we're looking at here. Uh, this is the original first photo I saw of the bike when uh, I was looking to buy uh, a Harley. And at the time, I had never ridden a Harley before. Uh, I had not owned a Harley before. I just decided I want one. I wanted one. I had some friends who had them and really just kind of wanted to see what, what the hype was about. And I knew nothing about Harley Davidsons at this point. And this was probably, I don't know, a little more than 10 years ago, maybe, maybe closer to 15 now. Um, but really, uh, I knew I, I'd seen uh, the bikes and I, what I was looking at was uh, street glides, I guess. And I was like, I don't like that big thing on the front. Uh, I, I want a bike that doesn't have it. And uh, that sort of led me to a Dyna, uh, a bike without a fairing and didn't know much more. Um, and certainly back then, Dynas were inexpensive. So it seemed just like a, an easy way to get into a bike that I kind of liked the aesthetic and style of. So this was as I saw it, we went down, uh, the bike was in Long Island and we went and bought it. And then the next thing we're looking at is getting the bike home and uh, kind of pulling it out and seeing what it looked like. And so this is the first photo of the bike uh, as I got it. And you can kind of see, I guess, <laughs> what it was when I bought it. It had uh, some kind of drag pipes on it. Uh, I don't think that's a stock seat, but it's a Harley seat. It's just, the, I guess, like more of like a, a touring Dyna seat. Um, had the stock bars, had these crazy square-shaped grips on it that were just awful. Uh, it was actually, I think the first thing I changed was putting grips that were round onto the bike. Um, single disc uh, brake in the front, of course. Um, fuel injected, I don't think I mentioned that. Um, that was one of the things that was important to me because I just didn't want to mess around with a carburetor. So. Uh, one of the fuel injected models and that was the bike. And then uh, here's another photo, um, still at home. And this is, yeah, right? So if you look at here, the, the grips are now, uh, they're round Harley p &A grips, the rubber and chrome ones. I don't think I've changed anything else on the bike as of yet in this photo. Uh, the windshield is on it and I think it came with the windshield. I can't remember, um, but man, look how tall and awful that is. Uh, I think one of the stories of this bike is like, man, this thing was not cool when I owned it the first time around. That's kind of what I was uh, <laughs> meant to say in the beginning of the video, but kind of forgot to. It's a really cool bike right now. And people go, this is this was your first Harley, this bike? And they go, yeah, it, it, it wasn't exactly like this when I when I had it the first time. So you're starting to, starting to get a sense of that now. Um, so anyway, uh, after that, um, I started to make some changes to the bike and kind of get it more set up for myself. And that's what we're looking at here. Um, I put some leather pros on it, so you know, could carry some stuff. Uh, 
I don't know, what else are we looking at here? It still has the forward controls on it that came with the bike. And at the time, everyone was like, yeah, yeah, this is great because it's already got forwards on it and that's what you're gonna want. And I, again, didn't know anything and was like, yeah, yeah, sounds good. Um, Turns out, obviously, that was very wrong, uh, at least for, for me. Um, definitely <laughs> mids are, are what we roll with now. But uh, you can also see here, we changed the handlebars. Again, didn't really know much about uh, the different kinds of handlebars, but definitely knew I needed to get my hands up a little bit. So what we wound up with here is like a set of, they're like 10 inch mini apes, like, like that would come on a street bob. Um, so got those put on, had my first experience with uh, internally wiring Harley handlebars, and that was a little painful the first time around, perhaps, uh, particularly with the old style wiring harnesses that are, that are in these bikes. Um, so here again, same, same sort of era of the bike. I guess now we've ditched the, uh, the, the stock seat, went with a solo seat. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of clean, I guess. Uh, you know, not the worst thing in the world. Those forwards are still, still pretty horrible and still haven't done anything performance-wise to it. Um, and then here's kind of one of the last photos of the bike uh, before, I, um, before I sold it. And, you know, uh, it was, you know, we'd added on the little stereo speakers. It's, it's, it's got the leather pros on it, which is cool. Um, the, that solo seat came with a passenger pillion. That's what we're looking at here. So that's on there now. Um, but I gotta tell you, and then here, one change we did make that I actually absolutely loved was we put uh, FLH footboards uh, on the bike instead of the forward controls. And that was a huge, huge uh, win for me. I was really much more comfortable on the bike having my sort of feet down. Uh, probably not, still not quite the same as mids, but man, like the footboards were, a, were an improvement over the, the forwards for me anyway, for sure. And what's funny is I think back as I was looking through all these photos, trying to, uh, you know, find the, the, the photos to tell the story. I had so many sort of memories and, and things like that flooding back to me. and. I forgot how much I just rode the shit out of this bike. I rode it everywhere. Uh, weekend trips, you know, events, just, you know, random days of just going and getting lost. And, you know, I had one bike at the time. It wasn't the coolest bike in the world, but it was that feeling of being sort of new to the Harley thing um, and just loving the bike that you've got. Man, you just can't get that back. I mean, for now, for all the bikes that I have and work in a shop and have worked at the motor company and all these things, it's not the same as it was back then. And I'd sort of forgotten about that uh, until I went back and saw some of the photos of the trips I'd done and things like that. So uh, it really just, just brought back some memories, I guess, just like of a, of a time gone by that was, that was just really awesome. Um, anyway, so at this point, I am, you know, I've, I've had the bike for a couple of years and basically decided I wanted to upgrade and kind of if you can see from this last photo what I was trying to do here was essentially I was trying to build myself a bagger um, I didn't know it at the time but that's kind of what it was I think friends of mine had you know baggers road kings you know heritage soft tails obviously street glides things like that road glides uh, and I was always you know struggling to you know carry shit and pack for trips and do whatever and at the time I was like yeah bagger that's what I got to do so I've had this bike for a while. I'm gonna to go to the dealership and I'm gonna trade it in. And that's what I did. And I traded the bike in for a uh, street glide and uh, the dyno was sort of gone, I guess, at that point. Except the truth is it wasn't really gone. And that's kind of where the story continues, which is while I was off doing what I was doing, buying other bikes and you know, learning more and you know, moving my career into, into Harley Davidson type things and wound up uh, leaving New York, leaving my job at BMW North America, moving to uh, Milwaukee, going to work for the motor company out there. All these things are happening uh, on, in, on my end of, of life. What was happening with the, the Dyna, the blue Dyna, I guess, for, that was its name back then, not the black Dyna. Um, uh, it was not traveling too far from home for me. So what happened was uh, a friend of mine bought my bike from the dealership, uh, sort of in a very similar scenario that I was in, that he was new to the Harley thing. And this was his gonna be his first Harley. So he bought the bike and learned how to ride on it. And he had it for a couple of years and wound up selling the bike to another friend of mine who also learned how to ride on it and had it for a couple of years. And by this point, I was, I had drank the Kool-Aid and was 100%, uh, you know, sucked in by Harley Davidson and owned a bunch of bikes and knew that I wanted my Dyna back at this point. And so what I said to him was, whenever it is you're ready to sell the bike, whether it's an upgrade or whether you decide you don't want it anymore, whatever it is, 
I'm your buyer. We worked out a price and I said, whenever you're ready to sell, I've got the cash, I'm ready at a moment's notice. Do not sell it to anybody else. Don't think about doing anything else. I want this bike back. Because I figured after two times changing hands, there was no way I was gonna keep track of this bike if it went to another owner after that. So um, I, I just sort of staked my claim. And as it happened, we were uh, all in Lake George back at the dealership that I had originally traded the bike into. And he was, we were there together and he saw a road king that he had his eye on and said, you know, I want to buy this bike and I want to get rid of the Dyna. And I said, I told you I'm your guy. Uh, so I said, look, here's what we're going to do. Uh, you want to buy this road king today? Sounds great. I'm going to pay your down payment for you on the bike for the amount that we agreed that I'd pay for the Dyna. And we get home, you're going to sign the title over to me. So we went back to, uh, back down to New York where we are now. I was living in Milwaukee, but was home visiting and... I said, got the title, everything was good, arranged shipping and had the bike sent out to me in Milwaukee where I was living at the time while I was working for Harley. And at this point, I guess I think, at least for me, is where the story gets interesting. So let's look at some more photos and we'll kind of pick up right there. So I got the bike back and here it is. Now, to the untrained eye, uh, it may look very similar uh, to what it looked like when I where we last left it. But there are some things that uh, you might not see in the photo or might not be able to be seen in the photo. Number one, first thing that jumps out, the tank, while a similar color, is not the same tank and it's the wrong color. The tank uh, had been in a little minor accident. Just about everybody who owned this bike learning to ride on it dropped it, smacked it into something. Uh, it really lived a hard life. So the tank got dented and was replaced with this one. And I actually have, it's probably not in the shot here, but I have the original tank with the dent in it sitting on my shelf as a little souvenir. Um, but this tank had been put on it. The handlebars I put on are still on there. Everything else is very similar. The footboards are now gone and back to forward controls that somebody changed along the way. Um, but otherwise, it's pretty similar to how it was. What you can't see is what bad shape the bike is in. Uh, the front end is bent a little bit uh, from, I don't know, smacking into a tree or a stop sign or something. Uh, the motor is covered in just stains and oil and the bike had been sitting outside. It really lived a, a, a little bit of a hard life after I let it go. So. We brought it back into the garage uh, at my house in Milwaukee and decided uh, this is not the bike that I want it to be. We are going to build kind of the, you know, club style Dyna and make it just a cool, easy, nothing major. Just take it down to the frame, uh, you know, not quite to the frame, but take it down to the motor frame, whatever, clean everything up, check everything out. Um, and just make it a fun, rideable, uh, you know, bop around bike. So that's what we started to do. So here in this photo, you can kind of start to see, uh, we started tearing things down. So obviously uh, all the tins came off. And uh, in addition to that, I mean, I guess the pipes are, they're not off yet, but they're, they're coming off. Um, starting that strip down process, you can see I've got the front end sitting on a, a two by six. And that was to kind of get a sense of the, the lines of the bike with, we knew we were gonna do a two over front end and a two by four is pretty close to that. Uh, so that was just an idea of kind of seeing how it would sit so we could kind of pick a uh, height for the rear shocks uh, to give the line that I was looking for. Moving to this, the other side of the bike, um, pretty much sitting in the same position, uh, just sort of getting ready uh, to, to tear into everything else. There's some cleaning that was getting done at this stage, um, but really just trying to start from a, a blank canvas. Now, as we move along a little bit, you can see we've got the new uh, Street Bob tank sitting on there. We've got the handlebars put on. I think they're probably, a, they're, they're wired up at this point, so I guess they're on there. Um, mid controls are back on it now in this photo. I'm not sure if they were in the previous one or not, but uh, we've also got the shocks put on there and just that kind of stock Harley seat just sitting there to kind of see how everything looks and starting to see how the bike comes together. Uh, move on to another one, and this is kind of a funny photo because the the that front wheel and tire that's on there is my is off my Sportster. And you can see the front wheel for the Dyna is sitting in the background. They're gonna go get powder coated in black. So I wanted to have a front wheel on the bike to kind of see how everything was looking. So we just put the Sportster wheel on it uh, while the other wheels were gonna get sent out. So now you can kind of see things sort of moving along with uh, the uh, front dual disc front end is on there now, all powder coated in black. We've got, you know, other little things starting to come together. Now, you know, move on one step forward. We've finally got those, uh, those awful pipes off of there. Uh, just about ready to kind of start finalizing it. We've got the new tins on, the rear fender back from paint. Um, 
everything's sort of starting to come together. And obviously now you've got the powder coated wheels on there. Still haven't done any upgrades in terms of the rotors and calipers. It's all kind of stock stuff. But again, at the time, it wasn't really about trying to build a performance bike per se. It was just trying to build a bike that was going to be fun to ride. So here now, uh, we kind of rolled it outside. This is right after we were done putting it together. So it's got everything on it that it was going to have in that first stage. And we did that uh, Bassani Road Rage 3 pipe. I mean, the bike looks great. It was fun. It was still a stock, you know, twin cam 88, with just a pipe and an air cleaner on it, stock brakes. Obviously it was dual disc now, but uh, stock suspension, just some inexpensive progressive 490 rear shocks on the back, stock suspension in the front. So this is, this is what I was trying to build at the time. And I wasn't trying to spend a lot of money and I didn't spend a lot of money. Bought a lot of used stuff, you know, the tank, the fender, and you see it even now, like none of the paint is super great on this bike, but it doesn't have to be. It's just meant to be a, a good, solid, clean Harley. So this is where uh, the project remained for a little while. And I will flip over, you know, if you look at the next photo, I rode the shit out of this bike again. I mean, even though I had, you know, Milwaukee 8, uh, you know, baggers and things like that, uh, I just loved the Dyna. And, you know, I parked it here. This is out front at Harley uh, in Milwaukee, Juno Avenue. I'm not sure why I'm the only one there on this particular day, but maybe it was cold. I don't know. Um, but I just loved this Dyna and, and it was, it was just such a treat. So that sort of was the end of that first phase. And uh, that's, that's where it stayed for a little while. Well, nothing can stay the way it is forever with, with me, with a Harley. And I did get the itch to want to do more. And that really uh, brings me to the next chapter, which is when I started uh, developing my relationship with uh, the guys and gals at HPI in Indy. And this is while I was working with Harley. I got to know Jimmy really well. And uh, we've been working on some projects and a bunch of things together. And one day I called Jimmy up and said, hey, so I've got this black 05 Dyna. We got to do something with it. I need, a, I need an HPI motor. And so it was before I had my shop, I wasn't building motors myself. Um, I wasn't, you know, dyno tuning myself. So, and I honestly, I didn't even really have the time either. I was so busy with work that uh, I just said to Jimmy, can you build a motor for me? And I didn't you know, have a lot of stipulations or criteria or anything like that. I didn't go saying, hey, I want, you know, this cam or this motor or whatever. It was just, hey, just build me a motor. You guys know what you're doing. Um, you know, here's a budget. Go have at it. So that's what we did. Jimmy was like, hell yeah, let's, let's, let's do it. So now here's the bike uh, sitting at HPI with the motor pulled out and a bunch of parts there in a box uh, ready to get installed. So the bike was there uh, for a little while to get built. And now we look, um, we got right here is the bottom end of the motor back from Dark Horse ready for Jimmy to start putting it together. So this bike really did get the full, full, full motor treatment. And it's kind of what makes it so cool when we start to get into the, the beauty of it, if you will, is that it's a, it's a sleeper, it really is. Uh, we started with a Dark Horse crank. So lightened flywheels, Timken bearing conversion, and just a super, super solid foundation to start building this motor. So motor starts to come together, uh, SNS cam plate, oil pump, gear drive cams, uh, HPI throttle body on there, obviously. And we started to use, rather than the polished uh, aluminum uh, covers that came off the motor, elected to see what it would look like using chrome. A lot of people, you know, try to mask the blonde motor thing with going with black covers, and it usually doesn't look that good, putting the black covers on a blonde motor. Turns out the chrome ones on the blonde motor looked, came out awesome, at least in my opinion. So you can see that starting to come together there as the motor's being put together. And then next stop was <clears throat> a bike going on the dyno. And so this got uh, a tune from Jimmy. And as you can see here, uh, the Bazzani, Bassani Road Rage 3 is now swapped out for the HPI pipe that's on it now. And the bike did really, really well on the dyno. And uh, it's just a, a really hot motor. It really, it really, it really came out awesome. And it was really my first experience, I guess, with a bike that had that level of detail uh, that went into the motor and, and really kind of lit a fire under me for everything else I would do going down the road in the future later. So next one we've got here, I guess uh, this is a, a little video uh, that they did of the bike. So I kind of, I guess I'll let this play and you can kind of see what it looked like. Uh, this was, I guess, right after it got tuned. The story of this pipe is actually an interesting one too. Uh, maybe that's for another day, but uh, pretty awesome. It came out 
it came out killer. See here, I've got a, a, a photo of the dyno sheet. This is from when it got tuned there. So it made, uh, what does it look, what do we got here? So we got it made 120 horsepower and 113 foot-pounds of torque, which compared to what this was as a stock 88, it was obviously mind-blowingly different, uh, the numbers that this was making before and after. So needless to say, incredibly, incredibly happy with, uh, with, with how this bike came out. But one of the things you'll notice on it is it's got a pretty, you know, reasonable torque number, not super special. It's, it doesn't make a lot of power in the bottom end. The cams that are in here, and they're SNS 585 cams and a relatively small motor. So really where this thing shines in terms of torque is between four and 5,000 RPMs. So this is not the setup for everybody, but for what I was looking for, it really, really uh, was, was awesome. So yeah, the cams come on a little bit later perhaps, but it makes that big horsepower number, uh, 120 horsepower out of this motor is just pretty wild. So I, it was just cool and different and unique. So really, really w was happy with it. So um, yeah, that's, that's how the bike kind of came together. And then wound up moving back to New York uh, after I left Harley, came back here, opened the shop. So here's, you know, sort of one last photo of just kind of out in Connecticut, riding it around. Um, and this is kind of as you see the bike today, um, pretty much exactly as it was. So that's the story and that's kind of how this bike got here and why it will be the last bike I ever sell, uh, hopefully never have to sell it. And that's it really, I guess. So maybe we'll do, we'll fire it up. We'll take a quick walk around, give you a little once over of it. And uh, that's gonna be that. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the story. Uh, I don't know if it's interesting to anybody. I guess you let me know uh, comments or likes or whatever, if you kind of liked hearing a little bit of the background on one of these things. If not, no big deal. We don't have to do these anymore, but I thought maybe a little change of pace to kind of try something new might be cool. So I guess let me know what you think. If you want to see more things like this, we can certainly do it. And certainly anything else you want to see, let me know. Uh, if it's a tour of the shop or tools or whatever, uh, happy to kind of provide the content that people want to see. So if there's something you're, you're interested in or you've got questions or whatever, let us know and we'll try and get a video together on something if uh, it seems like people are into it. So uh, yeah, so let's do it. So I'll, I'll roll the bike down, we'll start it up and uh, we'll see what's up.